aqueduct, uh, already from the name, is a Latin word, aqueductus. Aqua is water, ductus is to conduct. So it's a water pipeline. And everything what carries water can be called an aqueduct. Can be underground, can be on a wall, can be on arches. The important part is the water channel to bring the water to the destination. The Tiber River was not healthy. Uh, they abandoned this at a certain time. They relied more on uh, rain water collecting and uh, then came this step to bring water to the city. You could not found a city without water. The water uh, was then brought from far away from the mountains because the city was growing. They built one aqueduct after the other. They got longer and then they were standing on the arches, on bridges. Uh, they brought far more water and better water from greater distances. We always think of Roman aqueducts as water conducts built on arches, but in reality that was an option only in a special uh, conditions. In normal conditions the choice was to build underground. Ever since the aqueducts became a feature of Rome and there were about 11 aqueducts built in the space of uh, the remaining Roman history. Talking about water, doing research on water and antiquity includes a very, very clear human aspect. Uh, humans need water. The, the disruption of the aqueducts is connected to the fall of the Roman Empire. Uh, during the Gothic War, uh, Rome was besieged and uh, the uh, attackers cut through the aqueducts and left Rome without water supply. Barbarian tribes uh, led uh, on Rome between the 5th and the 6th century, they caused damage, they interrupted the branches and uh, ever since the Roman aqueducts were abandoned and didn't function. During the Gothic Wars in the 6th century, uh, this major disaster happened that the aqueducts were cut off. The people left Rome. They went to the countryside. Uh, the city of Rome estimated was reduced from a city of one million inhabitants to something of 25,000. Several popes were involved in refurbishing, restoring ancient Roman aqueducts and then built monumental fountains. Piazza Navona Fountain, the, the fountain of the rivers, or Trevi Fountains are some of the best known examples of the Pope's intervention in reviving uh, the Roman water supply. Several Popes built or rebuilt the ancient Roman aqueducts. So they did see these broken giants of water, as they are called sometimes, and they thought, we can do this again. Rome is growing, Rome is getting better, and they had the same building material, stone, brick, they had the same technology, no electricity, no pumping stations and such things, and so they used exactly the tracks of the ancient Roman aqueducts and brought, finally, again water to Rome.
A lot changed during the 19th century and 20th century. It's just now that we are looking back in times of water shortage, especially in developing countries, uh, for easy solutions for something where you can bring water often for agricultural use uh, to villages and if you have just a maintenance free aqueduct because the water is running downhill this would be ideal. water will be scarce. There will be a lot of polluted water available. In some areas too much water. We have floods and thunderstorms and rivers uh, uh, filling again their old riverbeds. Uh, but drinkable water uh, will be a major problem. In some areas, in uh, arid areas, uh, you have probably already a kind of war for water. I know that in general some of the concerns are connected to the you know, infiltration of polluted uh, material, that's a, a problem. I mean the, the, the combination of garbage disposal and the water system, it's a problem. Also industrialization of the neighborhood, it's another, it's another big problem. And in general also they say that the more you exploit sources, the, the lower the spring goes and tend to disappear. So obviously these are all problems that even Rome has to face. various initiatives starting with uh, a global day of the water and such things there are many initiatives there are uh, many associations uh, caring for water and this can be for the oceans for the rivers for the drinking water uh, so there's much going on but uh, we are far from any practical solutions yet. The problem is not present in all our minds.